Hi, I'm uh, Jesse Butler. I am a, um, an advocate at OCI. And uh, I've heard recently a lot of people talking about imposter syndrome. And this is something that I've basically dealt with my whole career, but I didn't know until recently. And uh, some people think it's not a real thing. So I wanted to talk about my experience. This is me growing up. Uh, we had a, a compact portable. We had a Commodore 64, which I only later found out, like, those are really expensive, like car expensive when we were kids, or when I was a kid, because you're all young. But uh, it's like, I was really lucky to have that. And so I had something where I could like fire it up at eight years old and like learn basic and then like learn more things. And I had a BBS uh, account on CompuServe with a, a little 300 baud modem. So like I was, I was kicking it. I actually got into high school. Uh, I like learned C and stuff, but I wanted to be a chef. Like I didn't even know people did computers for jobs. Like I was going to cook. And I mean like legit, like French people swearing at me and throwing saute pans. Like I was into it. Um, and then I worked for French people that threw saute pans at me. So I bullshitted my way into a job at Sun Microsystems. True story. And I, I loved it. Because I could write C code. And like, I was like, I can learn the rest, right? Like, I'm totally cool. And I bought like, the entire O'Reilly library. And I did. I taught myself like, a lot of shit. Um, and it was really uh, an amazing period of my life. But I started working like, a lot more than my friends. And I started working really, really hard. And I found out only later that I was doing that because I felt like I didn't deserve my job. And actually, what came even later is I realized no amount of success made that feeling go away. That was a pretty significant wake up moment for me. So imposter syndrome, which I'm not going to read. You guys can read it. Um, it. It actually feels like that picture. So this is a very real thing. And I didn't even know about it until like five years ago. My wife was like, you need to read this thing in, the, in, you know, in a magazine. And I was like, yeah. I, I think I had that like my whole career. And she's like, yeah, no shit, right? Um, so much of it has to do with this fear. Like I started in test and I was like, if I ask for a job in development where I want to be, they'll actually fire me because they, like, they must have forgotten where I was. But I actually, I got moved to development because they told me to come to development eventually. And I didn't know how successful I was. Like not a lot of people you know have written a driver from scratch for a Unix OS. I wrote four from scratch that are all still shipping today. And it still didn't feel like success. And that's why I'm here. I want to share that experience with you and tell you that this is actually a very real thing. Um, you hear about like climbing the ladder. It felt a lot like every step just flattened out under me. And I was just walking in a straight line. And I talked to kids coming out of boot camps. And they're like, I can't make it. And I'm like, oh, hell you can. Sure you can. Absolutely you can. And they're like, yeah, easy for you to say. I'm like, you have no idea what 15 years of my life was like. So that's why I'm sharing my story. It's very feely, isn't it? Um, this comes with advice, though. And everything I say is for everyone, right? I'm a mentor. I've been a manager. Um, so most of these things I apply to the people that I work with. But I wish someone had told me this, too. So if the things that I'm saying resonate for you, uh, take the advice personally. Uh, First things first, like trust that somebody gave you a job on purpose, right? Like you interviewed, you did some whiteboard leak code, they gave you a login and a Yubi key, they meant it. So if you have the job, you deserve the job. Snark is fun. My friend Karthik always reminds me of this. Snark is fun, but bad vibes are bad, right? So have a little fun, but try and be positive. Try and really intentionally take positive criticism and internalize it. Ask questions. Nobody knows everything. And you would be surprised if you ask a simple question in a meeting, how many other people are completely out, like, no idea what that dude was talking about. Thank you for asking that. This is a big ask, but please try to ignore FOMO. Fear of missing out is like bullshit in tech, because what we do is standard practices in the enterprise change every year. What's hot today on Twitter changes like daily. Do not abuse yourself with that. And a lot of people do. Twitter is also a really great place to flip, flip that bit and just, just look for imposter syndrome. This is just some random day, just the first page of results. This is a thing that we all deal with. And so my last piece of advice is try and get out of your own head a little bit. If this resonates with you, you probably have people you work with that feel the same way about you. So try to tell your story a little bit, and maybe we all realize that we all deserve to be here. Thank you.